My name is Mackenzie Keener. I am in class 165 and in A platoon. Cadet Santino Maluni. Uh, I'm from the 165th Cadet class and I'm part of A platoon. Cadet Orozco Castillo, B platoon, class 165. I'm George Zufala, uh, 165th Cadet class, A platoon. I'm Jordan Miller. I am part of the 165th Cadet class, B platoon. I'm Jenna Malay from the 165 class, B platoon. My name is Mark Stevens, uh, 165B. For Arrival Day, I would say it's very nerve-wracking. Arrival Day, um, that was an interesting day. Unforgettable, too. So, I was definitely very, like, shaky. I was actually one of the first couple cars coming up. Anxious, like my palms got a little sweaty. It was weird, because I don't really get nervous like that, so it was, like, really weird. I, I wasn't sure of anything. Um, got out, and it was just mayhem for the entire day. I mean, I don't really remember. I remember bits and pieces. Um, I mistakenly left my truck unlocked, uh, so Corporal Jeter opened up all my doors, and then I got yelled at for leaving my doors open. Got my got my um, my sea bag and threw it over my shoulder. I'm like, dang. I'm looking around. I'm like, everybody got these other sea bags with two straps. Mine's only got one. It's heavy, so it's kind of choking me. I did forget my room number the very first time around, so I had to go back. It was just extremely nerve-wracking, like not knowing what was next. Just uh, structures yelling, chaos all over. I knew, like I came in prepared, knowing that they were going to yell at us. Um, it was definitely a different level of intensity than I thought it was going to be. Obviously, you remember your room number because if you don't, you're getting sent to the back of the line. So, I mean, you you see everybody around you, but you, you're not really paying attention to what they're doing. It was pretty hectic. I it's crazy what the brain does to you, and you kind of forget a lot of things. Everything is just a blur in general. I mean, I just like I was just anxious because like I didn't want to mess up. Like, I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to do good because I want to be here. I don't want to like you know stand out like as somebody I don't care about what I'm trying to like, achieve. So I just was like just nervous about just messing up. From the first week, I'd say the one thing that really stood out to me was the first swim. The first swim for me was just terrible. It was really tough. I did contemplate on leaving. Like I was expecting it to be this hard, but at the same time, like, you know, it's different when you're actually here. Straight! Straight! Nobody better be dropping them. Starting with the smoke sessions, I would say they weren't terrible in the sense of like you were doing PT, but they were terrible in the sense of we didn't know how long they were gonna last or what was coming next or you know, if you were gonna have to bear crawl around the academy or how long you were gonna have to flutter kick. You know, it's, it's, it, it sucks, but, but we're gonna get through it. You know, it's not like I'm going through this by myself, like we're all going through this. Um, you know, you gotta make sure your boots are shined right, your gig line is straight. Like every like 30 minutes, we're going out to that parade field, touch a brick, Bear crawl, bear crawl back. The touch a brick, touch a brick. That was a, that was probably a, a, a phrase that's gonna stick in my brain for the rest of my life. I rolled my ankle and I remember looking at Jordan Miller and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I just rolled my ankle and it's only week one. You'd think walking down a hallway would be easy. It's not, it's definitely not. Kind of thinking to myself, I'm like, man, this could be a long 26 weeks. So they basically told us how to enter into the shell hole with like next 10 cadets one. Obviously, kids are having difficulty at the start because you're, you're going a mile a minute and your head's spinning every which way. The chow hall was definitely like my least favorite place to go. Um, and up until now, actually, like I've, I've had anxiety going in there. I would say there was a couple of times I was in the chow hall probably a little bit too long and I was getting yelled at, but it never got to the point where I was a person who threw up because I took very minimal food that first couple of weeks. Time out this line right now, say yes sir, say yes sir, and, you, and you're like close to one another, close to one another as close as you can, but it wasn't close enough for him. I really just wanted to finish real quick and get out of there. I, I thought I was prepared and that first cow session made me realize that I still had another thing coming towards me. Keep your heart rate low and 
keep breathing. Like that's pretty much like what I just kept telling myself. We just kept doing like round after round after round. I don't think really anything you do prepares you for what PT has in store. Your shoulders are on fire, uh, your legs are on fire, everything. And I was just like staring out, like I just zoned out. Like I can't believe my legs, I had noodle legs, like my legs felt like mush. Just like focus on your breathing, like tune everything out. Eventually it'll be over. Before coming here, I had never wrestled or done any ground fighting or any boxing at all. I mean, I've never really been in fights or anything like in school, so for me to come in and start punching on people I don't know, it's kind of a weird adjustment to have to make. It was very tiring. Like, I remember, like, after throwing a couple of punches, like, I would really just get tired and, like, gassed out. A couple of the guys, they're, like, they go really hard with boxing, especially, um, like, Looney, Babcock, Dransky, Bernier, Gregoire. Like, they're all, like, you just watch them and they're just beating the crap out of each other. Boxing was great, I mean, I loved it. Um, it was definitely fun, I mean, uh, I had a good couple of boxing matches. Wow, that actually, like, that hurts. Like, you know, your ears start ringing and you like, are like, wow, that, you know, that was a lot. You go in there and you're like, okay, yeah, it's call 100%. You gotta always give 100%. You gotta refuse to lose and you gotta end up winning. So OC, I've never been OC sprayed, even in the military. I remember like being sick to my stomach and not sleeping for like the two days leading up to it. It's gonna be liquid hell. Literally is what he said. It's gonna be a liquid hell on your face. I was kind of more amped up for it. I'm like, let's go, like bring it on until I got sprayed with it. I definitely had like the worst reaction, I think. He sprayed me and I opened my eyes and my eyes just instantly wanted to stay shut. But then like that OC started settling in, I'm like, oh shoot. Like, this, this, this is liquid hell. I would say whenever I hit the locker room, obviously you focus on the pain and how much you're burning. And at that point, my face was burning way more than my eyes, and I just wanted it to end. Patrol guys are awesome. They just give you that, that motivation that you need. It was really nice kind of getting to experience with them. I think that was the first day that we actually clicked with the patrol unit. So you're there with your buddies, one's got the riot shield and the gun, You, one guy is the AR. Once you breach that building, you're juiced up. You're like, whatever's behind this door is getting it. I banged on, I was like, boom, 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 stay police, I'm coming in real loud. Trooper Cox is like, yes, yes, there it is, we're gonna take this door back home. I, I, I love driving, I love that week. You think you're a good driver and then you go through one of those courses and you're like, oh, maybe I'm not as great as I thought I was. You have to be focused, you have to be paying attention, using your mirrors. Kind of being able to push the cars to the limit and as you're going through the courses for me was actually really interesting and a lot of fun. Uh, we also did, you know, the pits, which were, were great. You know, everything in your body is telling you don't touch this car. Being in the car that's getting pitted. It's like you're on a roller coaster. That was scary. Because I come through pits, I'm like, oh my God, they're trying to kill me. I actually really enjoy the scenarios for crime. Oh, the crime guys are awesome. Corporal Butler, he's obviously our platoon leader. Um, he's like a dad here at the academy. He's, you know, always there for you whenever you need comfort or talk about something. Scenarios that they push you through is the most common ones that, that you will come across in the field. I learned a ton of stuff through crime. They really have you, like, start thinking outside the box. So sometimes it's not what you would think, and then sometimes it is what you think, but then it changes to something else, and you have to, like, kind of be quick with how you're going to react to that situation. The first couple of weeks with firearms was, was very rough. They rivaled the patrol unit with, with humor. It's a show, it's a show, you know. I shot once, it, um, like literally two weeks before coming to the academy. They definitely put across like the safety flagging and like how big that is and just knowing how to operate your weapons properly. I'm more of a shotgun person. Um, maybe it's just because of my size, it makes me feel strong. <laughs> it was kind of cool watching other cadets who had never shot a firearm and then coming in here and, you know, really doing well. That bond we were able to create and make it like a, a stress-free environment down there. I think it really helped while we were here at the academy. So for our first inspection, obviously none of us really knew what to expect, how it went, you know, what they looked for, what questions you were asked. There's just so many little details that, that you have to focus on every single little thing. It's about caring about the little details and knowing the little details. It's kind of what makes this place. Looking back now, definitely, I can definitely see the change in myself. 
like like little things. I check I check my roommate. Like I look over. I'm like, hey, come here. Let me see before you leave. Platoon leader, your sergeant, the lieutenant. They get in front of you and they grab that gun from you, and you just go blank. I don't, I don't know what happens. It's just like your mind goes blank. Um, it is a little nerve wracking. It just shows like how over time like you build together as like a, a unit or like a family. You feel like you're part of something big. Like, I don't think I was good enough to, you know, because, like, it's the state police. Like, Pennsylvania State Police, me. I, I wouldn't have thought it, honestly. Uh, it's going to feel, I probably have some chills putting on the uniform. I mean, it'll be pretty awesome having the full Class A uniform, the formal uniform on. Even when we got our portraits done, putting them on just felt, it made it form, feel more real. And it just, it just makes you makes you have a lot of pride in yourself and how far you've come. I definitely feel the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I actually have a little pocket book that I've gone through and every single day I'll mark off a day um, and just remind myself that that's another day done and that we're one day closer. I remember looking at myself in the mirror thinking like how exciting it was that I'm like, I've actually made it like. What really motivated me at the time was my dad. He had always been my number one supporter through everything. I take a lot of pride in, in, in this shirt. Um, I hang it up night and I say trooper. Right here. Like I'm there.